Um, thank you. Oops, I'll get that pointed thing off. So th this title's a bit of a lie. I was just filling out the form on a Thursday afternoon, and you know, I make things up. It would be better called um, some ideas I had about how how you could use machine learning to discover things about um, digital collections, really, and uh, yeah, funding. So using machine learning would be easy to find soft associations that you can't be sure about, um, about all of your items, connecting them together or, or not. So for example, this is one thing I, I've done um, for Te Manga Pao, to um, see if, uh, Te Manga Pao, they fund Maori radio stations to speak Maori. And if they don't, they need to cut the funding off. So they need to, at the moment, they pay people to listen to the radio. And I did this pilot where um, we made a machine that would listen to the radio and say what language they're speaking. I'll, I'll do a demo. Um, so when it's down here, it's music. That's, that's saying te reo over there. English over that side. It gets a bit confused sometimes. Um, you see? The Māori Party Branch Annual General Meeting is being held on the 10th of September, 6 but 6. I don't know if 6. Sounds like I'm Australian. Australian, 6 p.m. It's being held at 38 Richmond Street in Marae Nui. You can contact Anei Te Tahi o Nga Mawaia. Kore o Nō Waru Whanatoru Rua. Kore ko Tahi me te Waru Te Tahi Atu Namad. Anyway, so it, um, it actually works 1,500 times real speed. So that's it was at real time, so you can see it. But it could, it could go through 1,500 hours of audio in one hour and just say, probabilistically, what language is speaking, or whether it's music, and so that you, it's for for um, radio funding, but that could easily be used for all of your archives if you've got um, an audio collection or a video collection to just run through and have a go at saying what language they're speaking, um, and also because it it actually distinguishes noise from speech, it can just pick out whether there's actually people at all. That's easy. Um, and then, oh yeah, does it contain? This is actually an algorithm Google has done, um, and yeah. Um, and then there's this another example I was going to talk about is um, looking at um, papers past and finding connections between amongst the text there. Um, but actually, something came up. Um, now, has everyone heard of this book? Um, I mean, has anyone not? Uh, any Australians here? <laughs> okay. Um, actually, also, if, you, if you're live tweeting this, just stop for a little bit and, and do, do something else with your fingers for a little while. Um, I mean, it doesn't really matter. But, well, you can be vague. Um, so, so it, it, this book, Dirty Politics, among other things, it, it talks about um, this popular blog, or influential blog, um, which was publishing posts that were written by PR people who were paid by um, various um, industries like um, tobacco and sugar and alcohol, and um, disgraced um, financiers and and they were, they were getting their posts put in this blog to appear as if they were from the blogger, when in fact they were being they were paid posts by, um, written by the PR people. Um, and we know this because of emails that got hacked. Everyone knows this um, from the PR person, Carrot Graham, to the blogger, handing over a blog post that then the next day that would appear on the blog. So there's there's no kind of 
for a lot of them, there's no doubt, but the emails don't cover everything. So there's a whole lot of posts on the blog that are quite likely written by Carrot Graham or other people that there's no evidence that, that they're written by the Carrot Graham or other people. But um, so the same kind of thing that I was thinking about when I wrote up this, um, when I filled in that form, I was thinking about doing this on the um, papers past, but then this, this turned up and I thought, well, I'll just do it on this and it'll be more useful. Um, <coughs> so, Carrot Graham, for instance, he wrote this post that starts like, well, no, not that. Oh, yeah, I've already, already explained that one. Um, uh, he wrote a post that starts like this, um, uh, slandering a um, health researcher because that's good for the product. And then, and then, and then through another um, channel, he, you know, he wouldn't be slandering the health researcher. He'd just be taking advantage of that slander. Um, anyway, so now if if you analyse this, um, if you just look at the words or the the text as it is, um, the overwhelming thing in um, the features are the, are the content, the, um, the names and the, you know, it's talking about alcohol. Um, so to analyse it, the first thing I did is um, looked at the parts of speech using a, a ready-made part of speech tagger. A part of speech just means it's a noun or a verb that's talking about that kind of thing. Um, it makes a few mistakes. The, these red ones down here, the, it's got the wrong thing. Um, there we go. So if you look at, it thought that steel was a verb and what was a noun not a verb, things like that. But overall, it gets a, it gets a pretty, um, gets it pretty good. And then if you look at the flow of the parts of speech, now that is a characteristic to that writing style. So. Um, Um, and or else you can do it like this so we replace the um, content words which are mainly the the, the verbs some of the verbs and um, like is is a verb so not every verb you, but and the nouns and especially the proper nouns you replace them with l these little tokens which these are um, Armenian characters um, there's a strange technical reasons why they're Armenian characters. Um, <laughs> and then look at the flow of this text, which if you read the whole thing, or if you read that in the batch, but you can read pages and pages of it and not know what they're talking about. So that then when you're looking at this, you're not classifying it as a, a, a blog about alcohol or anything, um, or even that it's attacking somebody. Although you can sort of maybe see that. Um, so then if you classify them using this, um, it's, it's... Oh, yeah. Then it, it's safer than um, if, you, if you classify them using the, the, the raw text, which is going to be a circular argument, because you, if you're thinking that Carrot Graham wrote all the posts about the alcohol, um, and then you find out that all the ones that have the word alcohol in are Carrot Graham. By you looking at the word alcohol, then you have a circular argument, and it's not, um, as, an, as you're proving nothing. Um, so I, I look at um, little sequences. Count, just count up the sequences of engrams in, the, in these things. And um, then this is looking at them with a visualization called TS knee. Um, the yellow triangles are carrot graham posts, the triangles pointing that way. Um, there are, right, so I'll spend a little, I'll see if this pointer works. What's the button I push? Oh, yeah. Right. So the, here's the key down here. Um, there's a, a cluster of Carrot Graham posts. Now, um, 
Simon Lusk is another of these characters who was writing things secretly. His ones don't cluster so well in this visualization. They're kind of, um, there's a few there and a few there, but then they're all over the place. And Carrot Graham has, has got some over there and some up there and some up there, which um, some of them it could be that uh, the information I've got about um, that, that says that he wrote them is actually wrong. I mean, I'm, I'm not uh, entirely sure uh, about um, uh, where it comes from. Um, I mean, I know where, where I got it from. I don't know. Uh, so some of them are definite, and some of them are, are, are maybe not so definite anyway. And, there, and this is um, Cassie Hodges. She actually signed her posts, but that's kind of like a control that's saying that if, if her ones can cluster together, it's showing that this thing works, sort of. Um, <laughs> and and there, so the, most of the, the grey ones are by Cameron Slater, and then these, he's got these like sidekicks who, like this one up here, that's the, um, there's a daily trivia section, and they all just end up there. And, and so if I cut out the, any post with the word trivia in the title, you just, it's the same without that. Um, so, yeah, so if you look at this, these ones, now these, underneath all those triangles, there's a whole lot of these um, grow posts, which are ending up being clustered in the same place using this algorithm. And so they um, are suspicious. Uh, and then, so this is look with labels on them. Now, some of them, like that Fiji one, that, that is something Cameron Slater cares about. He writes about Fiji, and that is almost certainly him. Nobody else cares so much. Um, and, and, and this one, 2005, now that is before this, this thing started going on. But now, um, I'm sucking on the taxpayer's tip, and RTD's targeting kids, that's the kind of thing that um, Cameron Slater wrote about. And there's a lot of these ones, I don't know if you can, the BSC is the Building Services, um, I can't remember what the C stands for. As, I, as, uh, as was an industry group um, that promised to pay the work, uh, uh, cleaning group, um, building services, a word for cartel, that's not cartel. <laughs> um, um, anyway. That they promised to pay the workers, and then so they got some kind of deal with the Labour government where uh, you had to be a member of this to get work in their government building. See, and then Carrot Graham was hired by somebody to break that law, so he started attacking um, the BSC and the um, the leader, the president, or the chairman or whatever of the of that group. Probably council is probably the word. Um, and Patrick um, Patrick Lilo and, and there's this this long series of posts just attacking Patrick Lilo for no reason at all, you know, did nothing that Cameron that yeah, Cameron Slater didn't know anything about him. It was just came out of the blue. And it was because Carrick Graham wanted the law changed and so the, because some cleaning company wanted the law changed, they hired him. He attacked this way and then through other channels lobbied the government and um, and they got the law changed and so that series of things finished. So yeah, so you get the idea and that's what um, you could do with papers passed um, where it doesn't matter so much but you've got all the time in the world to just have things running over it um, but almost all the letters to the editor were anonymous. Um, all, my, all, all, the, all the columns, all the, all the articles were anonymous pretty much. Um, this is from the 1913, you know, so there's a big general strike. And um, here, here's someone purporting to be a worker disgusted with the strike. But maybe, you know, if you look at their writing style, you might find that they actually wrote the article over here or or you know the they're a member of parliament or something like that and and so there are th you you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to prove anything but you would get um 
you get a, 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 like a web of hints. Um, and and it, it's kind of pretty much for free. Um, <laughs> how much time do I have? I feel like I'm going quick. No, no, you've still got 10 minutes. Oh, 10 minutes? Yeah. All right. Um, Yeah, I'll, I'll do. I'll do some questions. Um, I'll do. There are other algorithms. So this TSNE. This is something I was meaning to say. It's a good visualization algorithm, but it's not really a, a clustering. Algorithm. It's not the best for actually finding out the um, the things that were likely to be done by the same person. And um, there are other things I've tried, but they don't look as pretty. So. Um, and th th nothing is particularly, um, I don't think anything that will stand up in court or anything will come out of it. So it's not, it's not, not really very relevant, except that it gives a list of people for people, a list of articles for people who are looking into <laughs> things to, um, um, to look at. Right, oh yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I don't, I don't remember what I was thinking of. When I <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it, it's, uh, sorry for the false pretenses, um, but that the recurrent neural networks that um, we're doing the sound thing, and which can be used for um, doing all kinds of stuff with text, I, as a project I wrote myself, and then for the um, Looking at the the whale oil things, I've been using Scikit Learn, which um, is just a Python library. So that that'll do. That'll, that covers that one. Yeah, there we go. So, um, does anybody have any questions? That's it all. We need to use the mic for recording purposes, so. Um, thank you, that was a um, really interesting presentation. Um, I just was curious, like, um, how much, to identify somebody's writing style, how much text do you have to sort of uh, give it to uh, your software or whatever to learn? Uh, um, the more the better. So the, the, these, um, because each post is quite short, there's just not that much evidence in each one to, to make a definite um, call. But uh, like if I was doing something, like if I took um, all the books by Dickens, and all the books by Robert Louis Stevenson, and took each chapter, say, and shuffled them all up, then I'd be able to... And, and treated them in this way, that which ignored the, the topic, so you wouldn't know it's about pirates. Um, I would I would be able to sort them out pretty definitely because they're long, you know, a, f a f thousand words, but well, these are three hundred words. Yeah. So do, do we need to convert uh, those texts? Oh, yeah. uh, do do, you, do we have to um, convert some like? Like, let's say I have those, like, Dickens in PDF files, but do I need to convert the file format to something? To um, no, 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 it just uses text. So, yeah. Thank you. But I, um, the, the, I did that pre-processing where I was putting Armenian characters in for the nouns and stuff. So it does that stuff itself. Great talk, thank you, Douglas. I enjoyed it immensely. Um, a follow-up question to that one: so, looking at papers past, for example, yep. if we then could you get it to learn against itself? So it would then you would have each one becomes a control um, instance, and it would check for similarities against every other. Because we obviously don't know who any of the authors are for any of that stuff. So, can you make yeah. it self-controlling? Uh, yeah. Um, uh, yeah. Sort of, um, <laughs> like, um, well, like in that visualization, there were clusters about. Now, if I turned off the um, labels, so they're all just dots, then you would see that there were clusters where um, some unnamed, unnamed, cluster. unnamed names clustered. And yeah, 
Um, I was just curious about why you say it wouldn't stand up in court. Just, I, I mean, I don't know the New Zealand system very well. I'm from, a, I'm from New Zealand, but I work in Australia, and I've just moved to Sydney from the Australian National University, where we've got quite a large forensic linguistics department. And I mean, our, our linguists consult to the police all the time, and they're always being called as expert witnesses for author identification and that sort of thing. So I don't understand why. Is it your particular algorithm that wouldn't stand up in court, or is it that the New Zealand system is different? Um, it's a combination of um, possibly just my algorithm and, and, and just the... Um, I think there's just not very much evidence in each post because they're all trying to write in the same style. Right. So it's m most of the literature on this thing is, is well, like one r thing I re read about was the um, Turks and the Armenians arguing over who started it and because <laughs> and they're all talking on the same topic they don't need to ignore the topic and because they're not um, not trying to pretend to be each other, they're just trying to be anonymous, mm. then um, they've got more freedom and they have and they let themselves go. But Carrot Graham is trying to sound like Cameron Slater. And yeah, he, I understand. He, um, and I'm not, I'm not a, actually a forensic linguist, so that I, I wouldn't stand up in court very well anyway. You know. <laughs> but it seems that, I mean, from, from the literature at least, the Ingram um, approach to stylistics is one of the most accepted approaches. So I think, I mean, unless your algorithm's doing something particularly weird, I think yeah. it's one that would be appropriate for this sort of consultancy work if, if somebody, if a lawyer or someone was interested in following up on that. Yeah, I, and, and in fact, the, the recurrent neural network is much better than the Ingrams, but no one will believe that yet. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Um, yeah, I really enjoyed that. It was, it was great to see the, the outcomes of that. I'm just sort of curious, in terms of papers passed, there's a lot of uh, OCR errors in the text. W would your pro approach kind of be you know, would that matter? Um, would it still kind of find matches even though there's, there's a certain amount of noise? It depends, I think, how even the noise is. If, like, if, we, if everyone's aff that's affected the same, roughly, it'll, it'll be fine. The noise is good. Um, uh, if some of the newspapers, or you know, one, say one edition is really dirty and it's just got um, lots of noise, then, then they'll probably all cluster off together, you know, because they will look like garbage. So, uh, so I, it would kind of look after itself in a way, because um, the one, the, you know, the ones that look like garbage will just get thrown out as the, in the garbage pile. Right. Um, is there any particular data set you'd like to run this against? No. <laughs> <laughs> um, No, no. Um, <laughs> okay. Yeah. No, I'd, I'd quite like to just e explore and see what, what's possible. But um, there's no money in it, so I'm not really doing much. Anybody else? Okay, let's give Douglas another round of applause.